From hip hop to podcasting, a lot of people have been claiming that industry plants are destroying the things we love, but how? How has the rise of somebody like Ice Spice or Bobby Altov harmed the hip hop and podcasting worlds? And before we can answer this question, we need to understand what it truly means to be an industry plant in the first place. The most common definition is an artist associated with a label, but appearing as if they are independent and self-made, or an artist whose popularity is due to marketing efforts alone. So by understanding what people perceive as an industry plant in the first place, we can see what separates these types of artists from the rest of the creative world. In mediums like music and podcasting, we are gravitated to personalities who over everything else feel authentic. We are compelled to listen to and support creators who earned every ounce of their success the traditional way, and this is what allows for an artist's work to resonate with fans in the first place. If you think about your favorite artists, I am sure one of the defining reasons why you're a fan of them is because of a personal struggle or setback of theirs that on some level you can relate to. Because of how personal listening to your favorite artist or even podcast host is compared to watching your favorite actors per se, fans expect these personalities who they interact with on a consistent basis to in many ways reflect aspects of their own self so when it seems like somebody has broken this mold, suspicion immediately arises. When in what seems like overnight, somebody out of nowhere all of a sudden emerges into what seems like stardom, this often causes individuals to assume that the way somebody like Bobby Altoff got Drake on just the fourth episode of her podcast is because they are being secretly backed by a larger company or organization. Someone coming to the radar of the public eye with such a massive and marketable moment simply seems too convenient to be true, and without people seeing the journey it took to reach these massive moments, what the creator is offering up to us can end up feeling hollow and superficial, and this is where all of the anger and confusion around industry plants roots from. Modern audiences are more captivated than ever by personalities who present to them the idea of a journey that is inspiring, a beginning that started like anybody else's. In hip-hop specific, Specifically, we see this all of the time with many of the most popular figures in the genre harping on their rags to riches journeys and this is so integral to almost every artist's success in the media. As we have seen hip hop begin to decline commercially this year, losing a lot of the steam it has had for over a decade. The reason for this turning point is because of the shift from buzzing artists once talking about their powerful success stories and now they're just focusing on superficial high lifes and this problem roots from industry manipulation. It feels like discovering genuine artists has become harder than ever. Meanwhile, if you go to any of the big media outlets, they will convince you that any given new artist that's backed by the industry has already solidified their place in the rap game well before their journey has even started, and this is where the hatred comes from. It really speaks to how labels and corporations do not understand the fundamental nature hip-hop was founded on is what makes any rapper from Biggie Smalls to Future flexing on listeners so popular is not the fact that they are talking about how lavish their lifestyle is or how much money they have, but it's because of the journey they have depicted from their dark past to their bright futures that makes people love them. It's this musical journey of flipping the odds and overcoming adversity that's so inspiring and with a lot of industry-backed rappers simply focusing on the shallow perks of a lavish life, they are making this once revered, powerful, and inspiring art form lose a lot of its pride. You can directly see the change in philosophy and the push of industry plans when you look at such things like the XXL freshman list from the year 2016 to now in 2023. A list that was once seen as a near definitive source to find the next best artists has now just become a verification of the industry politics that have diluted the market and created false senses of hype and security for a lot of new artists who in actuality nobody really cares about. The real unfortunate part about this all is that art forms like hip-hop are the ones being hurt as potentially genre-changing talent is being suppressed by all of the artists who have been designed by committee, and fans are only losing more interest as things begin to feel less authentic. What only fuels this problem more is all of the confusion that industry manipulation in genres like hip-hop has cursed upon people like me and you, and what I mean by that is as listeners, we can usually tell what artists have genuinely built up hype and which are 
coming from the grips of labels and marketing, but reading between these lines isn't always as easy as it seems. In today's day and age, it seems like when any new or smaller act now gets some hype from any big artist or personality, they are automatically assumed to be an industry plant, and while industry plants are really out there and damaging the music industry, the loose way people use the term has convoluted its meaning and unrightfully damaged some artists' reputations. The term has become a quick way to degrade any new artist or creator's legitimacy very similar to the way the phrase sellout was used to scrutinize artists in previous decades. In the digital age where content is consumed so quickly and misinformation is able to spread widely, anytime there is somebody blowing up on the scene, they are presumed to be a plant with people often pulling together a loose string of points to support these claims. For example, somebody like Chance the Rapper was accused of being an industry plant because all of a sudden his 2016 record coloring book was all over the place. For people that weren't tapped in, seeing somebody seemingly out of nowhere working alongside superstars like Lil Wayne, Justin Bieber, and Kanye West made people suspect that he was a puppet of the industry, but in actuality, the mainstream audience of people simply did not see the hard work he put in to get to that point. Chance had garnered connections by building up his reputation as an independent titan, and between this and his shared birthplace of Chicago, he was able to find a mentor like the one and only Kanye West who was organically able to introduce him to big names in the industry. A lot of time with suspected industry plants, there is a journey that many have not seen, so the question on where to draw the line between industry plans versus genuine artists has only become more and more complicated over the years. When you see an artist who is being posted on every major media outlet, featured on all of the big playlists, and already has big name connections, meanwhile the public discourse around them nowhere near represents the volume of buzz they are getting from the media and press, you can start to see that the industry is trying to play a trick on you. Take somebody like Coyle Ray, who was featured on the front of big name playlists, performed at big televised award shows, and yet only managed to sell 9,000 copies of her sophomore album first week. When you do some digging, you can easily find out when an artist's fame has been manipulated by the industry and is not truly indicative of what people are actually enjoying and listening to. It's misleading to fans to present these artists as more prominent forces than they already are and beyond just the fans, it's unfair to the artists themselves as being manipulated by the industry only causes more confusion and chaos. The thing is, when the industry controls your career, it's great if you have the right marketing, promotion, and strategy behind you, you can end up having a very successful career, but if you end up failing, you are doomed to end up as just another broken experiment of the industries. We saw the ramifications of this around the late 2010s where every label and entity was trying to create their own version of a Lil Pump type rapper and capitalize off of his style and success, and the more they pushed these types of artists on us, the less interested people became in them as a whole. It's this practice from the industry that is dangerous as a Aside from deceiving fans, it ends up leaving a lot of artists without a job or chance to redefine themselves when it is all said and done with them as they were never seen as anything else more than a character of another artist and we have seen this over and over again from this point. When you look at the dangers of being a pawn to the industry from this lens, you see how it doesn't just hurt the fans, but it ends up hurting most artists who go into these experiments. Often when we talk about industry plans, we look at the artists who have blown up and propelled to stardom with the help of a label, but in actuality, this is not what happens most of the time. In the 2020s more than often, the plants labels have tried so hard to place prominently within the mainstream have actually failed to become successful, and there was an article that came out a few months ago that stated that record label executives are actually depressed because of this. The report said that outside of Olivia Rodrigo and Ice Spice, the industry has failed to break any other artists into the industry this decade, and the way this failure has haunted executives is pretty funny, but it's actually quite tragic in a way. Now don't get me wrong, it's a positive for the future of our entertainment world to see most of the artificially placed artists fail to take over in the way they were designed to, but for the artists in these positions, behind the deceiving branding and strategies, the label's greed and misguidance over their careers forced them to be something that they didn't want to be, and most of the time this ends up destroying careers. While it's easy to attack a suspected industry plant, we have to remember, most of these people all worked tirelessly to get noticed by someone in the first place who ended up signing them. Before any of these people became a pawn of the industry, they were signed because there was some bit of potential that they were showing, and for most artists grinding trying to live out their dreams, when you see a mega corporation offering 
offer you a contract that has promised to change your life. You are almost always going to take it until you realize that you have gotten into a bad deal that has forever plagued your career. This is where the conversation around the modern industry plant gets more complicated because for every artist who breaks through, there are hundreds more who become failed experiments that end up rotting away on these labels rosters and this poses the question. When you see artificial growth from artists and creators and you see their power derived from a big company, do we blame artists themselves or the machines that have told them that signing over their talents to these people is the right thing to do in the first place? So overall, despite industry plants diluting the music industry, losing labels money, and destroying artists careers both intentionally and unintentionally, corporations are still fixated on shoving more and more of these types of acts down our throats and the question has to be, when will it stop? When will the terrible success rate of these artists catch up to these labels and when will the industry become more transparent with the status of the people in it? Now this is definitely a complicated question so be sure to let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. Now if you're tired of industry plants harming the music industry be sure to smash that like button and if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe it helps me out a ton and it is free to do. Thank you for watching your support means everything. Mr. F, Fantastic Hip Hop, signing out. Catch you in the next video.